The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer to peer. What's up, Broskis? Happy Hello. Thanksgiving. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Hello. Yes, Hi. we're here. Thank you, man. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Did the best I could to find some turkey here in Mexico. I don't know how to say stuffing in Spanish, so it's like some rice. It's tur I feel like turkey is a thing there for some reason. Did I have turkey in Mexico? Is turkey a thing in Mexico? Is that like common or not? Uh, I've seen duck more often than turkey, but at the same time, I always confuse the two words. One is pavo and the other is pato. I, I think pavo is turkey, but I, I, I can never remember which one is which. Yeah, but yeah, you're, okay. you're you're much more likely to see duck here at a restaurant than turkey. All right, but but you yeah. found some. You made you made you made it on your own. You cooked it or? No, no, no. It's just a friend of mine actually went out and went to the grocery store and and found one. Found some like the last two turkey legs, which is kind of funny because usually you know that's like the thing that goes first. But they had two giant turkey legs, so uh, yeah, it worked out all right. Nice. I'm assuming right. that day is just like an average day for most Mexicans. Yeah. I mean, they've got Dia de Gracias and um, like, I don't know. I want to say at least a third of the people I talk to are like, oh, yeah, I used to live in the States, usually California. So, I mean, they know what it is. It's it's not like it's totally foreign to them. Nice. But, um, Dia, yeah. Dia de Gracias. I never even heard of that. When is that? Yeah. That's uh, Thanksgiving. The day. Oh, they do it on the same day? I mean, that's what they call it. Okay, like that's what I've heard people say. El Dia de Gracias, oh. so which is you know the day of thanks. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing down there. That's cool, nice. And then I yesterday, so I used the um, you know I I feel a little bit bad. I could have kind of warned you guys last week that um, that the Black Friday sale on Trading View is always like I mean it's like a seventy five percent discount. So for example, you can get Trading View Pro, which is normally six seven hundred dollars for like two hundred and fifty dollars on Black Friday. But I think that ended. I think that ended like it at twelve last night. So you might still check if you you know if you pay for the Trading View subscription. Which like if you do any trading, I kind of recommend that you do. Um, but uh, they have a Cyber Monday sale instead. Oh, okay. Well, there you Up go. To seventy percent off plus one free month. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So they, I guess it's all weekend then. Yeah, it's a good time to to get your subscription um, for Trading View if you if you're inclined to pay for it. Um, all that wave magic stuff that I show you guys, it's like it prints like six to seven hundred lines on the chart. So, yeah, they definitely make me pay them to uh, to be able to put that much stuff on a single chart. So, uh, yeah, we had um, the big news this week is that um, CZ, unfortunately, sadly, will not go to prison. Uh, he'll only pay a, a meager four billion dollars um, to avoid jail time. I and can't for the remember totally wrong reasons, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. And then, and then the money is like not even going to um, to FTX. So what, part of the finding was that um, was that he was part of the FTX collapse. Like he helped to make that happen, um, which we already kind of knew, basically. Uh, and Sam Bankman already knew. Yet Sam Bankman will go to prison for a long time, and and CZ just has to pay four billion dollars. So that's that's interesting. I mean, we don't really know how long Sam is going to go to prison, but he's been there, you know, for months now. Um, I can't remember if he's like admitting to like a criminal thing and he's like, yeah, I, I screwed up, you know, and here I'm going to pay the fine or whatever. But at any rate, he's not going to jail. And some new guy named Richard Tang is taking over. Um, he's been part of Binance for a while and um, he's a WEF uh, World Economic Forum member. Um, although recently, you know, Yay. it seems like that may or may not be just because their their face is on the website that may or may not actually mean much. Um yeah, I've yeah, noticed so, that a lot where there's some people whose just faces on there, and I, I think it's sometimes by happenstance and not because they're actually really like a part of it. Yeah, like they might have attended a conference, they might have made a speech. Like yeah. four years ago, if you had said, Yo, Anthony, you want to go talk to the WEF, you know, to the World Economic Forum and about Monero. Present some stuff? Yeah, I'd be like, Hell yeah, I'll go talk about Monero. And then all the anarchists would be like, Yo, this guy is a WEF agent you know he's hey, no, it's, it's, it's a little silly right yeah well because we saw that with malay right that was a big thing with malay this week everybody was like, yeah yeah it was kind of yeah. funny because i was like yeah that's not good he's a wef member and then luckily some other people 
um, did the research and they're like, no, here's the video of him talking. It was 2014. Oh, and by the way, how many of you that are like dissing Malay because he went to the WEF once, how many of you even knew what the WEF was in 2014? Like, exactly. you know, back then we, we didn't quite know. So. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so this guy, Richard Tang is going to take over uh, Binance and uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll get into it. Get into it more with the news, but just what what really happened with the Binance thing? Why is he paying for Bill? Like what? So what was the findings? Like what? Thanks. I, I, um, the Act so, violation, right? Was that was that? Was that was say that? again. Bank Secrecy Act violations. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, probably uh, like not complying, uh, not with money transmitter because I think they have those licenses. But like, I mean, money laundering and and who knows whatever. Like they've probably got some rap sheet that they haven't released to the public that they were presenting CZ with and that they were like, listen, take the deal or we're going to hit you with all of this stuff. Uh, or it's possible that the dude was basically just an insider all along. I lean towards that, towards that speculation um, more than anything. Um, oh, like, I feel like Sam Bankman was... market manipulation. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they, um, I, I really should go read the the uh the official release which i didn't i kind of just like went with the headlines and and a couple of my friends that kind of took a look um but i mean yeah it's basically like we know that cz's list of crimes are long and the stuff that binance has been doing um to people has been pretty bad uh i mean i think the big ones are are the lack of kyc intentionally serving u.s customers pretending like oh you know you just have to have an ip that's outside of the u.s um wink wink nudge nudge uh but we don't serve u.s customers so there's that, you know, it's like the KYC stuff. It's all it's all the the, the stuff that they usually get people for. Right, so, right, um, right. but I mean, you know, we also like we we know that Binance. There's there's something like 800, 700 complaints with the Federal Trade Commission about people saying, "Hey, Binance froze my funds. They won't release them. Um, it's been months, and and I can't. There's nothing I can do." Uh, I have a friend that <clears throat> that had a pretty significant sum of cash at Binance back in like 2021. And he got his funds frozen as well, and they would not respond to him, uh, or like they would send him, you know, just boiler boilerplate bullshit emails, like, "Oh, we're working on getting your funds restored," blah blah blah. And finally, after months had gone by, he got a lawyer to send a demand letter. And what do you know? Like a week later, they released his funds. So this happens. Incredible. Like we just know that they've been selectively scamming customers, and obviously with Monero, we know they fractionally reserve. Um, so it's just like their list of crimes is is long. The list of their bullshit is long. Um, who knows ex what exactly um, that that uh, you know maybe under the table or behind closed doors they were threatening CZ with. Um, so I mean, yeah, he basically had to settle because there's no chance he could have held anything. He would have gone to jail with with uh, Sam Bankman if he'd gone to trial. So, that's do we that think stands. this could this be the beginning of the end of uh, Paper Monero on Binance of fractional reserve? I wouldn't. Or um, I wouldn't hold my breath. Yeah, like I, I saw most of the just like initially look at the articles, the, the main things they were charging them for were the things that didn't really matter as much. Not the not the scamming customers, but more of the not complying with the Bank Secrecy Act. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, but we'll look at that later, of course. All right, all right. I mean, that that sounds like them like they, they really like in their court filings, they really focus on their authority and, and their scribbles and they rarely focus on like the real hardcore stuff that you've done to victimize people. Johnny getting uh, you know, scammed doesn't a, matter to Uncle yeah. Sam. Yeah, like the, that's just their MO. That's just how they that's how they go about it. So well anyways, uh, you know, uh price news kind of out of the way for the most part. Um let's see. We could start here with crypto. Yeah, why not? Uh we'll start with Bitcoin. Actually, you know what? Monero's looking pretty good right now. Let's start with Monero. So the U.S. dollar price, we're bumping up against our sort of horizontally challenged area with this uh, dotted line right there. With any luck, um, we'll be breaking through that pretty soon. You, you would think like that it should. Overall, this is a kind of pattern. This is strength. You, you expect this kind of thing to bump to the upside, break the resistance, and then uh, and then start bumping up along the uh, the more long term line here. So <clears throat> um, we've also got the the uh, the ratio, the XMR BTC ratio. Um, has been underperforming, um, as we talk about very often, you know, we've got the, uh, we've, we've got the correlation here to the total crypto market cap, or maybe it's towards Bitcoin, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, total crypto market cap. Yeah. So Monero just like is inversely correlated when crypto goes up, the ratio of XMR BTC tends to go down. Um, and we could also put this in, in terms of Bitcoin, it would be the same chart basically. Um, so 
it looks like things are kind of trying to find a bottom here. You'll notice I've drawn this new line right here, and this is our very long-term view, obviously. So we'll zoom out here. We're looking at now like the, the past four years. And, and you'll notice that uh, we can now draw a nice little happy support line right here. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this holds, but uh, you know, if things are really looking up for crypto, then um, it, we might spend some time down here on this line, uh, just kind of hanging out in this area. So, um, you know, right now, like things look optimistic for, um, let's just say they look optimistic for, uh, the ETF approval. That seems like that's going to happen. Um, I don't know if sooner than later, but it, it is looking optimistic. Um, I actually, I saw an article that, that where, where Gary Gensler congratulated, um, Bitcoin on the white paper and, and then he warned all the other crypto projects to, you know, they're, they're coming for them, something like that. Um, but, um, yeah, in, in terms of like, in terms of the ratio here, uh, it, it does seem like we're going to have some problems. It does seem like crypto wants to continue being optimistic. Um, if the ETF gets approved, I would be slightly worried that, um, you know, that could be another top. Um, it seems to have been the case that when some major inclusion in the financial world happens, that does tend to correlate with the top. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just wouldn't expect too much from the ratio here at the moment. Um, we talked a little bit about this last week, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it once more here. This is the market cap, the XMR market cap dominance, and we still have a kind of head and shoulders in play here. Um, but it's really like, like we talked about, we really needed to break this line. We needed to hold above here. And that would be like basically the confirmation that the head and shoulders um, is in play. So that's like the final confirmation there. And we didn't get that. Instead, we broke down from that line. Now, again, things could continue bumping up against here and then break later. And because this is such a very large pattern for the past really two, almost three years now, um, you know, this, this is not invalidated, but, um, you know, it's it would be better if we saw this thing come to the upside, break to the upside. So... We'll just have to wait weeks and perhaps months until this thing decides to do whatever it's going to do. Uh, head and shoulders don't always have to play out. I've noticed lately they seem to work pretty well. Um, but, you know, it, it's always kind of like a probabilities thing. And uh, <laughs> at, at best, you're looking at probabilities of getting on the right side of, of various of various chart patterns. And, and you're hoping that those probabilities play out. And at worst, it's more like tea leaves. So... <laughs> Uh, you kind of have to understand which markets you're looking at and um, like the opportunities and moments where things can can break, where things can where like the picture is fuzzy, things aren't lining up. And you say, well, it's probably lower probability. It's probably closer to tea leaves or in the case of like 2021, when sort of everything lined up or earlier this year, you like everything lined up in January. You're like, no, it's, it's time to go. Uh, OK, so here is the divergences really just basically oscillating around zero. Um Again, so Binance, Binance looks like it's coming back into play. There was a period of time where it looked like Qcoin, uh, and it still kind of looks like Qcoin is now making big movements. So I wonder if, I do wonder, like, crypto insiders, et cetera, like, we know Binance fakes their volume, shit like that. So I wonder if they're going to kind of move some of that stuff to a new exchange. Maybe it's Qcoin. I don't know. Uh, but Binance is going to have to be on better behavior uh, from here on out. But, you know, that... I wouldn't expect that to necessarily stop the crypto cabal. And we need those guys to pump our bags, even and including Monero. Uh, not not exactly. I mean, they'll try and like suppress our price, but you know, we're gonna go along with the rest of the market as the market goes up. So let's go to Bitcoin. Take a look. First of all, down here, you can see the GBTC premium. Actually, let's zoom in a little bit. I always forget forget that it's hard to see these charts on 1080p. Um Okay, so uh, on the bottom here is the GBTC premium. You can see that continues to close now at minus 14%. So even on like GBTC, the ticker on the NASDAQ, which is not, all right, it's, it's only based on the Grayscale Trust. It's not based on a proper spot ETF. Um, so they can't really balance their books in such a way to peg the price properly to Bitcoin. So that's why you see this divergence. Um, they can't actually sell Bitcoin. So right now, uh, the, this ETF, the the sorry, the Grayscale uh, Bitcoin trust is trading at a minus 14% to its actual value to the net asset value of the Bitcoin that they hold in this trust. So this has been closing. This is something that absolutely must happen. If we think a bull market is going to happen, it, it's just with it being negative, even just psychologically, it's like, okay, there's institutional FOMO and they're going to buy our bags. Sure they are. Why, then, then why is this trading at minus 14% to the spot price of Bitcoin? If there was institutional FOMO, you should see a bunch of like 
finance bros coming in here to buy this up at a free 14% spread. I'm almost kind of surprised at this moment that it hasn't closed to zero because at, at the moment with the ETFs looking the way they are, this almost looks like a free 14%. Um, but who knows, right? Who knows? There's probably some explanation and I just don't know what it is. Okay, so here's the Bitcoin price. And you can see that in, in sort of a big picture we've got uh, since since the end of last year, really for the past year, we've got this um, this line right here. It's a resistance line, and then you you could also you could also draw it like this. Um, so we're kind of like in this zone, basically. We're we're like chilling out in this zone uh, on our way up. I say our, you know, I don't know how much I really hold Bitcoin I, a little bit here and there um, because of the liquidity, because everybody uses it. Uh, but what we're looking at here is like the promise, the potential that that this this rising resistance could get broken. And in a bull market, you do rate you do break rising resistance to the upside. So you'll notice that uh, sort of like the big horizontal area of significance would be drawn right around here around the forty eight thousand area. Um, it does very much look like Bitcoin wants to do that. Like you've got you've got the sentiment that's there. You've got the stock market is running. Um, you have liquidity getting pumped into the market still, like from the reverse repos, for example, and of course the government printing a, a cool trillion or so every quarter. So like all of the things are looking like this, this could really happen. So, um, and then you'll notice also that previously kind of like, okay, we bumped up, up, up and then fell, but that was also, there was a wedge pattern here. And that was like, that was a pretty clear wedge pattern amidst a situation that, um, that liquidity was still contracting. So it was easy to say that was going to go down there. Um, that was like last year in August. Uh, but then we only like just barely wick touched that line, but now we're like sitting here, bump, 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 like just hanging up at the top of this line. Um, this is exactly the kind of thing you would, you would want to see, um, to think that you could break this line. So. Uh, Bitcoin looking optimistic, still markets still looking optimistic. Um, like, so for example, uh, we've got a number of different shit coins here. Well, some of them shit, some of them just coins. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll see that FTT had this big, massive pump because, um, there's the speculation that, that, uh, they're going to reform the exchange. They're going to put someone new on top of it. People are going to get repaid, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter like in positive times of happiness and exuberance, um, or the path leading to exuberance, people people just say, "Oh shit, FTT token, you know, they just make a comeback. The cases are resolved, and we're going to get the FT ETF, uh, Bitcoin, and then Ethereum, and and uh, yeah, FTT is probably going to pump." So everyone just kind of says that, and then even if they don't, like insiders can just like start pumping the coin, and then just dump on everyone. Like so, they massively pump it, and then everyone gets excited, they buy into it, and then they dump their bags when liquidity comes into the market. Um, you'll see that Link is still like basically top performer here. Um, there are other coins though. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't think I put soul on here. Why didn't I put soul? That, that's another big one. That's like a, that was a Sam Bankman, uh, pumped token. XMR is in red, um, because Bitcoin already had kind of orange. Um, I tried to make it burnt orange. I'm sorry. I didn't be true to our colors here, but you can see the red. Um, so overall XMR is actually doing pretty well relative to itself. Um, and relative to the pack, Litecoin still kind of at the bottom of the market, BNB at the bottom of the market with with BNB getting resolved, like with, with Binance getting resolved, maybe there's the potential that BNB could like be the next big pump here coming up. I probably won't bet on that. Um, I'll probably just keep the positions I have and then look for exit opportunities um, if we get to like very clear levels. So for example, like Bitcoin getting to the 48,000 area, 45 to, you know, say 50. To me, that's a very clear exit area. Um, if you're a long-term trader, you take profit right there. You hope for a better re-entry. If you're wrong, you know, and it continues like going to the moon and okay, you just say, all right, well, I was wrong and I'm going to have to buy up, buy higher. But I mean, that's the danger of being a trader, right? Which is why people hodl. Um, and the easiest times to me are the bottom of the market and the top of the market, right? Like we have big statistical metrics we can look at. You've got macro liquidity situation that that you can examine. The, the, the picture is very clear to me at the bottom and the top, but it's the interim. It's the in-between that's a little bit harder to tell, right? Because um, you might have less liquidity, so it might be easier to, to move the market one direction or the other. Um, so you can, you can see bigger, wilder swings when you're sort of in the interim. Uh, so, you know, I mean, really... I think your best bet, your best strategy personally is to is to try and identify those massive macro trends and then DCA in and DCA out. So um, 45,000, 50,000, that's a point to me, that's an opportunity that you can DCA out. Um, if for no other reason, then that that is very likely to be a big point of resistance. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the um, at the stable coins because, you know, we haven't looked at them in a while. So here we go. Uh, green is USDT, 
uh, the market cap of USDT, and then white is the market cap of USDC. So interestingly enough, um, the stablecoin dominance has been rising. Uh, sorry, not dominance. Uh, the stablecoin, um, the USDT, like total market cap is now above its all time high when Bitcoin <laughs> was at 65, 70 K um, in 2021. So I find that interesting. And, uh, you know, how much can we really believe that this is real? Probably a significant amount of it is real. Like there's probably China demand. There's probably this and that. And, um, you know, it, it does. I do still kind of like the idea, the theory that it's probably hard to exit out of USDT. I know that that uh, Bitfinex will be like, we always redeem and we're so good about that. And they probably mostly only redeem to themselves and their friends and give everyone else shit. You know, it's like, oh, you want to buy our coin here? We'll sell it to you. No KYC, no problems. But you want to exit the coin. Oh, suddenly we follow the law here and you've got to provide you know, everything like all right, I won't be lewd today, but you know, they're going to like bump up the extra KYC requirements and, and exchanges have all been known to do this. Like it's like the, uh, it's, it's the doge versus the buff doge meme, you know, where it's like the, you know, if you, if you want to get in like, Oh, well, it's fine. You can, you can just, just buy, we barely KYC you hardly at all. But if you want to get out, well, then we're going to require like one level after another of proving who you are. And it's not always the case that they always do that, but I think they selectively do that. Right, because you can't do it to everyone, because then everyone gets pissed off. But if you do it to a select few people, you know you can, um, you, you can make a slight difference there in the exit, uh, in the competition for exit liquidity. Um, okay, so anyways, the idea here is that USDC people are selling off USDC because you can actually redeem it, um, and uh, and then uh, so that market cap is going down, uh, whereas USDT has the opportunity to keep pumping their own market cap. So uh, let's take a look really quickly here at the Bitcoin, uh, like the one hour. Oops. There we go. Bitcoin one hour chart. So basically things are continuing up in this uh, in this rising channel here. Um, you'll notice. So these are parallel lines, right? So this is the reason that it's drawn this way. I know that like like this line right here, you're kind of like the very top line. Like, wait, hang on. But it broke through and it's all dirty. And why is that line? You know, there's only those two points. The reason is because this parallel channel is, is about the best way. It's like close to the best fit. You would draw this line. Did I do the numerical analysis to prove and say this is the best fit line? No, I didn't do that for this, but you know, you can basically eyeball it and get close enough. So, I mean, again, like you think, okay, you want to see this eventually break to the upside. Um, we we sort of had this situation all year long where where Bitcoin like had the opportunity to break through rising resistance and it just continually had troubles where it would like it would it would pump up to the upside, it looks like it's gonna break, and then it would fall back down. So I don't like that. I don't like exactly that it that it looks kind of like that, right? Where we had the same story for the entire year where it's like, we're going to break rising resistance and keep going. And then you just like bleed out. But at a minimum, at least in this case, things have continued to follow the upwards channel um, and have not bled out. Things have not gone on a, on a long downturn. So, um, I mean, yeah, but just overall, like the picture looks like the targets are obvious. Like you want to get there. You're going to try and reach for 45. The ETF's coming um, maybe sooner than later. Who knows? The, the Binance stuff is now resolved, right? Because there was this, this big concern that, okay, are they going to like take down Binance? Because the takedown of Binance would have been massively price negative. Now, CZ's got to come up with $4 billion. So maybe that's slightly price negative in and of itself. But I mean, I got to believe that they can come up with that money somehow. Uh, I think I saw, <laughs> and I didn't verify it, but someone was like, yeah, like the day after um, he settled, they uh, there was like this big movement, or maybe it was like the day before, um, there was this big movement of tether to the tune of four billion dollars, uh, which is which is kind of like how in um, when the New York Attorney General fined Bitfinex um, eighteen point one million dollars, the very next day they printed eighteen point one million dollars of tether, <laughs> uh, <laughs> presumably to pay the fine. You're like, wow, that's funny. They just they just find you for printing fake tether, so you printed fake tether to pay the fine. Um, <laughs> you gotta love the the hilarity of that. Um, at least. At least we can laugh at the troll that that Paolo really is, um, even though you know he's kind of a bit of a scammer, um, you know. But whatever, like I think the the whole fact of the tether mechanism and everything that is a form of leverage that helps to pump the price and that really pumps your bags up. And if you're smart enough to exit at the top of those leverage bubbles, like that's massively lucrative, um, and they know it. So um, I think it's negative for adoption because people that get wrecked above fifty thousand and have to wait two years to get their money back. Um, those people, you know, a lot of them leave and they never come back. It would be better if we slowly, steadily gained. And what's crazy is that I think it was Gian, I can't remember his name, Devasini, Giancarlo Devasini, like the guy that actually is like top dog at Tether, because Paolo is just the CTO. 
Um, but the guy like on BitcoinTalk.org forum in like 2012 or something, something like early on, he was like, these massive price spikes aren't good for adoption. Um, you know, it would be better if we had slow steady gains uh, like the stock market. And I was like, holy shit, this guy, like, that's interesting that, that he really, you know, that he would have said that. And now he's like the, now he's the CEO of Tether. Um, one of like the big owners. Um, okay. Anyways, uh, yet I digress here we are on gold and gold has basically recovered. Um, you know, we hit this line. It was kind of like the line you sort of expect, um, sort of a topping line. Um, not a top, sorry, not a topping line, but you know, a spot for resistance. Um, things are back here again, you know, after coming down, probably this is going to break to the upside. I wouldn't expect gold to necessarily just like immediately take off. Um, but if it does, that tells us that we're probably like, if gold really like breaks to new all time highs, that tells us we are in a new bull market and, um, yeah, there will be pullbacks along the way, but it, it tells us we're in a new bull market. Um, I'm actually starting to get pretty concerned that inflation is going to make a big return. They funny enough, a big bull market could actually delay the return of inflation because if everyone sees that, what are they going to do? They're going to keep their money in the stock market. They're not going to sell their stuff. They're not going to, you know, go buy new cars and stuff. They're going to be like, shit, I can make a two X, a five X, a 10 X here. I better be in the market. I better take out a loan, which has the effect of printing money. And of course those loans get pumped into the market. So, um, you know, we could get into another bull market and we could have sort of like a hiatus on inflation. And you'll notice last time what happened, we had massive, a massive run on everything after COVID. And then, uh, and we had very little inflation until like right at the end of 2021, it started, you know, getting to be a problem. Uh, and then it was just like terrible inflation, even as the markets were crashing. So that's like, that's, I would expect a similar thing to play out here that, that the inflation will probably be generally not not going too crazy. I mean, there's always inflation. The prices are never coming back down. You're still like readjusting mentally to the new prices, you know, to the new level. But um, anyway, so the point is here that if gold makes starts making a big run to the upside, um, that's like that's a very big clue to us that uh, that a new bull market is 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 in progress. Um, you know, in terms of the chart, you would kind of expect this thing to get up here, maybe spend some time doing that, and then break to the upside. But things don't always have to unfold like that, right? Like things can unfold in, in interesting ways. Like gold could do this, that, and then that, right? Like, and that could happen early next year. That could happen mid next year. Or maybe this thing, you know, does that and waits until almost 2025. Um, so in terms of like the four-year cycle, you would say that, well, 2025 would be like the big year, you know, the headliner year that usually stuff happens, you know, things start making their crazy big gains beyond their previous all-time highs. Um, but you know, things don't have to look exactly like they did the, the previous time. So, um, finishing up here pretty soon, we've got the reverse repos and this thing continues to just dump, dump, dump to the downside. I read, I read an interesting thread that talked about the, that the fed is basically they're, they're having the, the U S treasury, the government, the fed, all of them, the last treasury sale that they did, I think it was about a month ago. They had significant problems. Like no one wanted to buy their shit ass debt. So what they're saying is that what this guy was saying is that all of this money parked at the reverse repo is getting less percentage than you would on like a short term uh, on a short term bond. So here's the bonds, for example. And you'll notice. So the white here is the overnight federal funds rate. The reverse repo rate is slightly below that. So you'll notice that you could be in a one year. Let's take a look. Make sure you get this right. A six month. Um, oh, let's see. Let's just make sure which one this is. You could be in at least like a six month or a one year um, bond and still getting like a higher rate. So what he's saying is that basically they're they're getting they're encouraging people that are holding um, at the reverse repo facility to swap that out um, for treasuries. Right. To sort of make up the shortfall that the government can't sell enough treasuries to meet their um, to meet their needs. So um, probably a lot of that is, is continuing like that liquidity coming into the market is continuing to drive, um, the bull market. That's, um, you know, I wouldn't call this like a, a necessarily a macro bull market yet. You know, you, you basically, you have to break all time highs to really claim that it's a macro bull market, but this is the NASDAQ right here. Um, and green is the, uh, is the U S liquidity, right? So that takes into account like everything, right? We're talking M2 reverse repos, um, the, the treasury balance sheet, the federal reserve balance sheet. So even though the federal reserve is still kind of contracting their balance sheet, um, a lot of liquidity is still flooding into the market, which is probably, you know, a big thing that explains this big rise in the stock market. So, um, as long as these mechanisms continue to unfold, it seems like the macro picture would say that the direction is up. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, 
just seems to be the case. And you'll notice, funny enough, like energy oil still doing relatively okay. $75 like for a barrel of oil. That's not bad. That's that's what we've been like. That's You can see that historically for the last uh, really two decades, just about, you know, we're slightly... No, I mean, we're just, we're in trend. Like we're basically in trend. Okay. Yeah. You know, you had the crazy crash down here, but um, overall, like this is middle of the road for the past two decades on the price of oil. So uh, yeah, I mean, just the big macro picture right now, just things look like they're like, they want to continue going up. Um, I think that's about all. Uh, unless let me just check. About, uh, things. Yeah. I saw a lot of people pumping Xano this week in the privacy tech community. Did you, oh, I did don't you know. I um. I mean, I have a confession. I don't. I don't really pay much attention to too much else going on in the privacy, the privacy coin world. I, it's like, listen, I want to see Monero adopted. Like Monero's the best version of a privacy coin that we have right now, and we need a shelling point. We're already divided enough. We're already small enough. Like, if and when Monero is adopted, it let's just say the same level of big, same level as Bitcoin, and um. You know, there's like it's it's just broadly used. Th then okay, like let's explore other coins. But um, you know, for the meantime, we just we don't need them. Like Monero functions really well. There's I, I can't see why I would use Xano. Yeah, what, yeah, yes. Yeah. What did you see? Um, well, people have just been talking about it this week. You know, Xano does some things different. You know, it's it's different than Monero, right? Monero is trying to be purely digital cash. Xano is. They've got some kind of hybrid, like. Yeah, they they're building confidential assets. Yeah, they're hybrid proof of work, proof of stake. Um, they're kind of trying like to that actually. trying to be the, the Ethereum of of privacy coins, kind of going down that that road. I thought that was um, what's the Tari? Tari, what? No, Tari. I don't, what, what's up with Tari? Like, is it ever gonna? Did it ever I mean, launch? I, I, never, I don't know. I would love. Like, I would love to. You know, have Fluffy Pony come on and talk about that. I haven't I haven't heard much about it. I heard people talking actually at when I was at La Bitconf last week. Really? Uh one evening. No, we just ran into some hardcore Monero people and they were talking about Tari. Like uh, okay. You know, I like, can't wait till it launches. Yeah. Yeah, there was whatever. the momentary like kind of miss we'll just call it a misconception that Tari was gonna be like Monero's layer two. It's like mm. but even even Rick was like, No, that's that's not that's not the case. He he kind of put it yeah. into that. Yeah. Which was nice to see because you're like, you know, that's that's definitely not the case. To say that would be a bit of shilling. Yeah, that was the original thought when it was coming out, right? That was like kind of the original meme. Like it's gonna be layer two for Monero, and that quickly uh was quickly realized that's not the case. I, I bet um, you like their design was somewhat open and they were like, Well, maybe we could do this and this and that. And as they like narrowed down the design focus, they're like, nah, no, that's that's really not gonna be the case. Yeah, really, it's only connection to Monero is that it's merge mind with Monero. Right? Yeah, That's I was disappointed to see they like connection. only did one third merge mining. Like it, it was supposed to be fully merge mining, and then they they like changed that. Yeah, but Zano, Zano, as you know, I mean the the creator, the guy behind it, is the guy that um, supposedly created the first implementation of of the Monero software, right? Oh, interesting. Um, so it's it's interesting for from from that perspective. Um, and then Did I'd say also interesting, yeah, he, sp he spoke at Monerotopia. Yeah, okay. we had, we had a, had the whole Xano team down there. That's right. And I so, really enjoyed his speech actually. Like, projects are, yeah, yeah. I like, I, res I respect their, their approach and what they're, you know, they're trying to just be an honest, uh, tech project. Right. Um, so I appreciate them for that. Um, and they're contributing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, they're trying to like, um, accomplish a different thing. So, Yeah. I mean, you gotta you gotta respect that you know the guy who found it is the original you know the guy who originally implemented essentially the, the first version of Monero software. So res respect to that. But what it, it's was the it's news it's, there. And then the other interesting thing is you had Co work on it, right? He he helped um, develop Zar. I think what do they call it? Zarcanium. They're they're basically their proof of stake method. And Co helped develop that because it was it was a it was a breakthrough, right? So it was the first time in crypto to do essentially be able to do proof of stake privately. So huh. there, there are some interesting things, but I, this... I wouldn't say it's uh, you know. And if you listen to him, he has the utmost respect for Monero, uh, Andre, because he knows he knows it's the most successful privacy coin. Oh wow! This thing is done. 
Jesus. The past nine days, it's done. Yeah, yeah that's why I said to, ch to check on it. Yeah. And then I saw, I saw like Vic tweeted it out. Um, yeah, Vic was like buying Xano, I think, is what he was like saying. The price. Damn it. <laughs> this is one that I the should not have one missed. transaction or something like that. Yeah, no, you, should not, you were there. You were there at Monerotopia. Where do, what, I no. mean, he was like, I, I like, he was one of my, one of the speakers I liked more. Like, I was like, yeah, this guy is like, he's, he's not being tribal. He's not like, oh, we can't do proof of stake. It's evil. You know, he was exactly. bringing good arguments. He had seemed to have like a good depth of knowledge. And I remember like at the time I was like, yeah, I should check out the Xano thing. And then somehow I, I, I guess I just dropped it in my mind. Yeah. Now yeah. that you oh. see the money, you're sad. Nero founding know. Father, you know, like he's uh, certainly somebody to respect. And he's this continuing. Definitely, oh, maybe I should still YOLO something onto this anyways. Like <laughs> 3X is nothing for a new coin. A, I mean, this thing just started trading in the July. Bottom. That, that, was, that must have been Vic's it's buy. Extremely <laughs> slow market cap. Uh, yeah. Extremely, like, what is it? What's the market cap on this thing? It's like, all right. I think it's all you sleuths out there. These three days are where Vic was buying. See if you can track down his address. Maybe shake him <laughs> out for out. some Xano. <laughs> Be like, yo, Vic, give us, give us, put Xano on, on the, uh, <laughs> on Cake, Cake Wallet. Wallet. <laughs> I guess, that's, I, I guess that's what's happening, right? If he's buying it all up. You want me to, uh, to bring that up in the next stand-up? <laughs> <laughs> if he adds it, like, in the next month, like, we'll be like, yep. <laughs> yeah. I, well, he, he I, I could definitely see him moving in that direction. I think he might have mentioned it already in the past. Maybe not. But I think the other big news was they're going to get listed on an exchange. Because they're not really listed on any major exchange. It's only, what's that? Shitty, uh, I shitty no, 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 uh, trade org, trade ogre, oh. trade ogre. I think that's like the only exchange, yeah. It's just coin X and trade ogre, just those two. So that, that Coinex, probably could have been it because they're getting big? out. Um, I don't know. Do you know, buddy? Is coin X what is coin X big? Is that like a, a large oh, exchange? Or? Um, it seems Maybe. like it's popped up and it's it's been listing coins. Um, for a while now for like last year or so i keep seeing it like a lot of times coins that are new that i can't find anywhere else like a chart will be on coin x so i don't know if it's big but it seems like it seems like there's potential one of the largest pumps for monero that i remember is when monero got added to the exchanges in uh korea in south korea that was mm -hmm. like overnight monero like tripled in price or something ridiculous that was like 2017 or no yeah it was insane and it was really because it got had gotten added to the exchange um i mean in retrospect that's what it seems like so i mean these small cap coins when they get added to large exchanges i guess it's, it's a significant event right yeah yeah that's like actually the past few months have really taught me something i um you know like i told you guys i basically bounced out of my long-term trading stack but i said all right I could be wrong. I'm not too sure. I'm not totally sure where the market's going to go. I just want to protect my stack, but I'm going to put some like, you know, some small percentage of my, of my net or my crypto net onto these like outside players that if I'm wrong, they should just bounce crazy. Um, so yeah. link was one of them. Um, Tau bit tensor is another one. That's like, I mean, this thing has done 10 X almost, uh, in the past month, like in the past 30 days, it's done almost 10 X. Um, I should have bought some soul. I don't know why I didn't. That would have been a good, like, just, you know, outside play. Um, but yeah, like, so that's kind of a lesson for me. Like, shit, man, you can get some pretty sweet gains even without having your main stack in play. Uh, Xano, here's another example of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I really, I really don't gamble. It's more so because of the time, like, the, I just don't have the time or I don't want to yeah. devote that energy to it. But in theory, it's great. Like, so is is anybody successfully being like a financial advisor for crypto? Are there like, are there services being offered where you know somebody you give somebody X amount of crypto and they basically manage it for you? I mean, I'm sure there's crypto it. hedge funds. I don't. I've never really looked into trying to find one. Um, Not even hedge funds. Like, I like like you can do it, right? Obviously, there's, yeah, there's regular. Can just hire a body to right? like, like, manage my crypto. I, like, if I give you, I, I was gonna have this conversation with you offline, but just in theory, right? This idea, this concept, is that being done? Whether it's you or somebody else, I'd have to. I'm imagine. assuming. I'm assuming that. Um, so first of all, yes, but most of them are probably just like deals that people make between each other, um, which I've seen a couple of those happen and. <laughs> I, yeah, it's like you really better trust the person and know the person well, and even then it could be a problem. 
it's not um, even trust it's like the person may you know you may, you may just end up in a scenario where like money's lost right and then you're like feeling bad about the situation right it, it, yeah it has to be very professionally done the other thing too is like when it's not your money you know it's easier to like you're not going to okay. make the same decisions with other people's money as you are with your own money because the loss doesn't right. hurt as much right but it'd be but, cool um, to do I it mean, in like a multi-sig way right you have somebody managing it and then like you have to to sign for them to trade or something. It would be cool if exchanges did something where it's like, there's a login for view only. Like you can't make right. any trades, but you can see what's happening. So it's like, okay, if someone's managing your funds, you can log in and see all the trades that are being made so that you know that they didn't like run away with your funds. Um, right. I'm sure there's gotta be some companies, some corporations out there that do like crypto management of funds, stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't really know of any, I have, I've never tried to look, like track that down though. So. All right. Just throwing some business ideas at you, man. <laughs> it's an interesting idea. It, it definitely, you need a lot there's of some, permits. There's some inter iterations I feel you can do of it to kind of keep it decentral. Like um, maybe where you're not directly the one, you know, placing the investments, but you're advising on a like close basis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could probably Just, do something yeah. on um, like a smart contracts platform where there's a contract, people put money into it. And then, um, and then you've got some kind of manager that buys, you know, that uses the native decks on whatever the, it could be Ethereum, it could be Ethereum layer two, whatever. Um, and then that would all be fairly transparent. You wouldn't need an exchange to do that. Um, I mean, it, it's possible it's doable. I mean, to be completely honest for the past few months, I've, uh, I mean, I, I haven't really like, so during during the uh, run up in the bull market and then during basically 2022, all of that run down, I mean, I was living and breathing markets. In the past few months, I really haven't been like super hardcore into markets. I mean, I check the charts every day. I spend maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, um, just like looking around, seeing what's going on. Um, but I'm really not like hardcore into markets uh, the past really maybe like six months even. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, if it was a business, you know, you got to like, you got to make that your life. You got to do that completely. I hear you. I'm, I'm just looking at these. A, a lot of people talking now because we brought oh, up yeah, Zana. They're, they're talking about Zana. Uh, Gombat. Yeah, he, Gombat, jump on. To, uh, man, jump on today, actually. We don't even have to talk about Zana, just in general. Um, I but he seems to know the most about Zana out of any of us. So. He does. He knows a lot about Zana. His insight would be helpful. Yeah, j jump on during viewers on stage. I also want to get his insight on Argentina. And the yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. I've enjoyed Gunbat's uh, takes on Twitter lately. Yeah, he's he's on top of it. I, I was hoping to meet him down there in Argentina, but it didn't happen. Um, we will uh, keep going. Let's keep let's keep moving. We got a long long show ahead. Body, stick around if you can. Will do. Thanks, right, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Body, as always.